election 2015, preliminary election, September 22nd, uh, we have the luxury of having the three candidates for city council in Ward 6, the only city council race other than council at large. There's a mayor's race on the ballot. But we have three candidates running for Ward 6 city councilor for the seat of retiring Ward 6 city councilor, Michelle Dubois. Uh, the three candidates in the studio are going to do opening statements at this point in time, and we're going to get right into it. We will go, uh, we did a, a drawing, and we will go right to uh, John Drzinskis, who chose first. Good afternoon. As Mark said, my name is John Drzinskis. I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton, a lifelong resident of Ward 6. Currently, I'm living in the village section of Ward 6. Uh, I feel I'm the best candidate for this position. Uh, I've been formally endorsed by uh, current counselor, Michelle Dubois. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity in my opening statement to thank Mark Lindy and um, the entire staff here at Community uh, Brockton Community Access for having us on. Um, you'll hear more about um, my views and my opinions and my vision for the city of Brockton and in particular Ward 6 during the debate. Thank you. Okay, next up would be uh, Jack Lally. Hi, my name is Jack Lally. I'm running for City Council Ward 6. I've lived here almost my whole life. I would like to echo John and his thanks for the crew and for uh, Mr. Lindy, and especially to Mr. Lindy for this is, this is a holiday that he's, that he's working on. He's making a special effort to be here and bring this to you. I feel my primary focuses are public safety and fiscal responsibility, and you will hear more of that as this continues. Thank you. Okay, and Steve Foote. Hello, I'm Steve Foote. I'm running for this seat because I am a lifelong resident of Ward 6. I believe I have the uh, education and experience over my two opponents that will make me an effective city councilor from day one. I'd also like to thank Mark and the crew here for putting this on. I've, uh, many of you at home may recognize me as the host of Democratically Speaking for the past seven years. Uh, Many of my positions, uh, one of my main positions is the Cary Hill Fire Station. I have a road repair position as well, and hopefully it's something about the schools in our ward, Ashfield and Brookfield. Hopefully we'll get to all that through the course of the questioning. Thank you very much, and uh, let the action begin. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, you, are, you can use all of your time today because there are three of you, and it's six, 60 minutes, and it's just me asking the questions. So I'm going to start with the easy question. Um, I'm going to switch the order around each time so everybody gets a fair shot. Uh, the first question is you have one minute to describe yourself. Steve Foote first. Well, the, the biggest thing about myself is uh, I have the experience to do this job from the very beginning. Uh, I have um, networked myself through the course of being the uh, Brockton Democratic City Committee Chairman for three terms. I just uh, stepped down from that position to run for this office. I didn't want any conflict there. I'm also the Vice Chairman of the Plymouth County Charter Commission. With uh, On that commission, I work with some of the selectmen from Abington, which I will use that knowledge to uh, co correct a serious road uh, problem we have at Boundary Street, North Quincy, and Chestnut Street out of Abington. They've talked about everything from uh, uh, a rotary there all the way up to uh, all this massive construction. I think it's nothing more than a um, traffic light. I, I will work with my friends in Abington to get that done. And of course, road repairs, huge issue. Everybody talks about it when you go door to door with them. And we're looking to touch on that as well. Uh, again, I'm a 56-year resident of the neighborhood, lifelong resident, went to the Brookfield School, uh, the third student through the door at the New Brookfield School when it opened in 1963. Went to North Junior High School. I'm the only one on this panel that uh, went to public school all the way through. I graduated Brockton High School in 1974, and I have an associate's degree at Massasoit Community College, as well as a bachelor's degree from Northeastern University, and I don't believe my opponents have that educational background. Okay, I'm going to up it. I gave Steve a minute 30, and he did a minute 24. So next up, John Drzinskis, describe yourself to the voters. Well, if I had to describe myself, I would probably describe myself as a friendly, personable, outgoing person. Um, I'm new to politics. This is the first time I'm running for 
any position. And I've been told by the people that I've talked to in my ward, I've been going door to door, uh, proud to say I've knocked on over 1,300 uh, individual residences. And the, uh, the folks that I've talked to um, have all agreed that uh, this is a good thing that, uh, that I'm new to politics. I'm not a career politician by any stretch of the imagination. I do a lot of volunteer work in the community already. And I consider being a ward counselor uh, just a, a service, a give back to the community. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a service, it's, I consider it volunteer work more than a job, and it's a service to give back to the community. Uh, I'm not afraid, afraid to speak my mind. Uh, I'm not afraid to ask the tough questions, even if the questions offend some people. If they have to be asked, I will ask them to, to find out uh, the correct answers. And if I don't know the answer, I will be honest with them and straightforward and say, I do not know the answer, but I will do the research to find the correct answer. Thank you, John. And Jack. Well, I, I a bit like John, I'm, I'm new, to the, new to the game. I really have you know, no, no, ex no, no experience in politics. I haven't run for anything before. And I have no allegiances except for the, peop except for the people of Ward 6 the people of Brockton in the United States. That's it. I'm not tied in with any groups. I'm not, I'm not looking for any special interest kind of goals. I'm here simply to be a conduit for the voters. If there's something wrong, they can contact me and I'll work to get it done. There are things that need fixing in this ward and there are also things that need protecting. As such a quiet neighborhood ward, we are vulnerable to people trying to take advantage of that. We need to preserve what we have and build upon it. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna reverse the order, of course. And uh, the next question is, we are talking specifically about Ward 6. All the elections so far have dealt with um, um, citywide, city council at large, mayor, what is the number one thing for Ward 6 that is your top priority, specifically for Ward 6? I'm going to start with John Drusinskis. Well, Mark, the number one priority, my number one priority should be what the, what the neighbors, what the voters in the, um, in the ward, in the neighborhoods are talking about. And by far and away, the number one issue in the ward, especially in Ashfield and Brookfield, where Jack and Steve live, are the roads, the condition of the roads. Uh, they're, they're in terrible shape. I can tell you just, you know, not only driving on the roads, but going door to door, walking, uh, I twisted my ankle a couple of, di a couple of different times. So <clears throat> the con conditions of the roads are very important. Uh, I know we can't fix them overnight, uh, but we have a new DPW commissioner here in Brockton, Larry Rowley. He seems to be a good man, and I plan on meeting with him one-on-one -on -one to see what can be done about the condition of the roads. Uh, that, by far and away, is the number one issue um, that people have been talking to me about. Okay, thanks. Um, next would be Jack Lally. I've heard a lot about the roads as well. There are some roads that haven't been paved since they were put in in the 60s, but a resounding concern would be the preservation of the Cary Hill Fire Station, station number seven. If that shuts down, the values of the homes of Ward 6 will drop, their insurance rates will rise, and they'll be left without somebody who's there all the time without, without ever missing a beat at the drop of a hat, and will be left, left out to dry. It'd be like adding a whole nother tax just towards six, and that's not something I find acceptable. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Steve. My number one concern is the Cary Hill Fire Station. I'm glad to see my opponent, Jack, has looked at my website and read my palm card because I've been talking about this for going way back into probably a couple of years ago. Uh, the condition of the roads are, are a problem. They are definitely are something that needs to be addressed, but without the Cary Hill Fire Station, keep in mind, Ward 6 is about 81, 82% residential housing. And out of that 81 or 82% of residential housing, I'm gonna guess and say about 60% of that is senior citizens. Without the Cary Hill Fire Station, 
uh, not only just for the fire protection it provides, but for the EMT services that it provides, it's vital that we have that there. None of the other fire stations are close enough. If, you're, if you don't have that fire station and you need services and you end up dead, the streets aren't going to matter. Okay. Next up, um, Ward 6 has two public schools in it, the Ashfield School and the Brookfield School. It used to have three. It had the Franklin School, mm -hmm. which has been torn down, and now there's residential housing there. Um, how important is education to each one of you? And what would you do? The city councilor is not in charge of the educational needs of the community, but when they sit down at budget time, they review the school department budget. I know that the superintendent went on a tour with different elected officials in the different wards and then invited all of you in to talk to her about educational needs. How important is education and how does your background from your past education within the school system or without, outside of the school system, how does that form your opinion? I'm going to start with Jack Lally. Well, right now you're looking at a fresh, or about as fresh as you can, a fresh product of Brockton Public Schools. Closer to four years graduated than 40. I can say very, very firmly that you're right, we don't have control over the schools but we do have control over that funding or to some degree. We can implement things to help or hurt the schools. We can work as a support team to help the school committee give the schools everything they need. I know that the crowding in schools is becoming quite an issue. I still have a sister in Brockton Public Schools. This is an important issue for me. And I will work with the school committee to help get things done. OK, we're going to go to Steve Foote. Yes, uh, we recently had a meeting with, uh, down at the school department <coughs> with uh, Superintendent Kathleen Smith. Uh, John was there, Jack was not. Um, uh, she explained to us that uh, all the different things about the school system, which, you know, I, I've, I value her, her opinions and her knowledge, and, and I go kind of by that. But uh, state funding rules the school system, basically. Uh, the city council does not have a lot of play room as far as uh, what we can do with the money. But where we do have some room is uh, we can, the, the busing budget, we, the city council approves the money that we use to school, for school buses. Uh, I talked to Kathy Smith. I also talked to Mike Thomas uh, while I was there. Uh, this is an example of the networking I've done over the years. And uh, they want to go to neighborhood schools, and I, as do I. You should be going to the school that's closest to your house. If you do that, if we go to neighborhood schools and we go to the schools that are closest to our house, that will reduce the need to bus people all over, uh, bus students all over the city. And that way we could say that's the one way we can really save some considerable money. And my opponent, Jack, said he went to Brockton Public School. He did go to Cardinal Spellman in high school. So just to clarify. Okay, um, John Drzinskis. Yeah, I, I agree with Jack and Steve. Education is very important. Um, our, our children, our young people are our, definitely our future, okay? The future is not three of us here. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the young people. And I plan on, on working as close as I can and educating myself with whoever the current Ward 6 school committee person is going to be. It looks like it's going to be Joyce Azak, if it's, uh, unless there's a um, tremendous write-in candidate. I'd like to work with her. Uh, she's a neighbor of mine. She lives around the corner from me. And um, I, I would like to work with her as, as far as uh, educating myself on, on what, what's needed in the school system. Um, Steve mentioned that we attended the, um, the school department forum uh, hosted by Kathleen Smith. One of the things that came out of that forum was um, that the two schools in our area, the Asheville and Brookfield, are getting, uh, by November, are getting new boilers and uh, new roofs. The money has been approved. Um, it's it's um, in the budget, and it's it's going to happen. So that's, that's a great thing. Um, the... The... Uh, educational system here in, in, in Brockton is, is great, where I believe one of the 
um, best educational systems, public school systems in the state, and we should keep it that way. Thank you. Um, we'll get back to some of these issues because we'll have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. um, my next question for all three of you is um, your life work, your volunteer work, being involved in the community, um, young age, older age, whatever. How, is that, how has that prepared you to be a city councilor to represent other people in the community? We'll start with Steve. Well, uh, most of my volunteer work has been done just by listening to the folks in my ward, listening to the people that live around me. They know that I'm the guy that they can come to if they have a street light out. This is, this is without even being elected. People know they can come to me if they have a street light out, if they're having a problem. I spoke in front of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the board when we were getting a new sidewalk in front of our, uh, right down my street, Sully Road, near the Brookfield School. Uh, I went in front of the assessor's board to uh, make sure my neighbors were going to get their uh, proper um, money uh, for their front frontage that was taken from their lawns. And um, also, uh, I went down to a, uh, a meeting in July about a solar bright field that was proposed to go in behind the, uh, over by the VFW. Now, both of my opponents were at that meeting. However, uh, John at one point a minute ago said he's not afraid to speak up. Well, I was the only one of the three of us that actually spoke at that meeting. And I spoke vociferously in favor of the uh, residents on this issue. Uh, we were successful, along with the 75 odd residents that were there, we were successful in stopping that, uh, that project. So. Uh, basically, my volunteerism has to do with doing the, jo the job that we're all running for right now, basically all the time. I'm also a, a gold card member of the VFW and the USO. I've donated to many charities over the year, Special Olympics, uh, Wounded Warriors, many other charities uh, over the years. And basically, I also have a, a, a disabled brother who I take care of, and that, uh, that's a lot of volunteerism right at home there. So. Uh, that's uh, the extent of my uh, volunteerism and background. Okay, next up would be Jack Lally. Life work or volunteer work, how does that prepare you to be a city councilor and represent other people? Well, I, I can tell you right now that I, I don't consider city council really volunteering. It's, it's a job. It's something you get paid to do. You get full health, in, health insurance, the benefits. I work with, uh, I used to go to karate. I have my black belt. I work with personal best charities when I can to help them feed the, uh, the homeless. And while some may consider it a stain to have gone to Cardinal Spellman, stain on my record, they do try and instill in you charity, kindness, looking out for those less fortunate than you. Part of their curriculum, I have gone and I've worked at shelters for people who are currently homeless, women and children, people who need that kind of charity. And it gives you a at the ground level look at what people need. And I want to see what I can do to help people from the government's position. Thank you. Quick rebuttal, Mark. Um, I'm going to let you do that after John does okay. his statement. Sorry, John. Okay? That's all right. John. Thank you. Um, well, I'm a retired person, okay? I've worked my entire working life, uh, last 30 years or so, as a retail manager. And I think being retired gives me a distinct advantage over my two opponents. Um, I do a lot of vol volunteer work in the community. I'm a fourth degree member of the Knights of Columbus. We do a ton of charity work where we have a direct connection with Main, Main Spring House here in Brockton. I do uh, volunteer work up at the uh, VA Medical Center. I help out with the, uh, the residents, the patients there. I do volunteer work at St. Joseph's Manor Nursing Home. I'm also on the Board of Trustees there. Um, both my parents were there as residents at one time, so this is just my way of giving back. And uh, I, d I also volunteer, or I have volunteered, for the regional Old Colony Hospice Organization. So my opponents talk about volunteerism. Okay, I, I take an active role in volunteerism. As uh, Steve said, his, his, his uh, version of volunteerism is to, re to, to reach, uh, reach out to the voters. Well, yes, but 
I, I have the background in volunteerism, and um, I have to disagree with Jack. I, I, I think, I think uh, you know, yes, being a ward counselor is, is a paid position, but it's also, uh, to some degree, it's volunteering, giving back to the community. Okay, um, sounds like there might be a few rebuttals. Steve asked first, so I'm going to let you um, rebut. Just, just to clarify my comment to Jack saying that there's a stain on Spellman. I didn't mean it as a stain on Spellman, but Jack said that he went to public school. Spellman's a private school. Jack, I know you're a new guy, but when you talk to the voters, you've got to tell the truth. Jack, would you like to rebut that? Hey, uh, I'd, I'd love to. Well, when I mentioned going to public schools, it might, it might not have come across as this. I am, I am new. I am new to this. But uh, I meant the public schools in Ward 6. I did not go to Brockton High. I went to Brookfield and I went to Ashfield. And I still, I still talk to people I know from there. And I've bumped into teachers at both places who are still happy to see me and are still perfectly willing to tell me what, if anything, they need working right there. John, did you have any comment on any of that? Um, no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, connections, networking, contacts. Okay. I've looked at all three of the brochures. Um, one of them talks about politics as usual. Um, Others are a little more subtle, but it's come up already in the context of this debate, okay? How do you think connections or networking would help or hurt or ties to anyone? Someone used the term special interests. Um, talk about that. I'm going to start with John Drzinskis. Well, Mark, I'm, I'm proud to say I have, I have no special interest groups pulling my strings or any of that kind of nonsense. I'm my own man. Um, I'll, I'll, make the, I'll make the decisions, the decisions that the, uh, the voters, the residents of Ward 6 want, even if it's unpopular. Uh, if, it's, if it's something they want, something they need, then I will make that decision. I'm not afraid to, to, to make that decision. I don't have anyone influencing uh, how I think. Uh, endorsements, yes, I have endorsements, okay, but those people, those individuals, those groups will not influence how I think. Um, as you mentioned, Mark, my, my slogan is politics as usual. Well, one of my talking points is uh, there's been conflict, recent conflict in, in the past uh, between the city council and the mayor. And it seems that they do their negotiations more through media, uh, specifically printed media, the enterprise, talking back and forth and criticizing each other back and forth. Well, that needs to stop. You need, if you have a problem with an issue or with a person, you need to sit down and talk to that person face to face, man to man, uh, person to person. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work through the enterprise. There's all kinds of in, in, innuendos and so forth that, that arise out of that. That's one of my talking points. That's what I mean by politics as usual. That has to change, for sure. OK, next would be Jack Lally. Uh, about endorsements, connect, connections, networking. How do you think it would help or hurt you as a city councilor in Ward 6? Well, the more you're networked in, the more you, you know, meet new people, you know, get the, you know, exchange business cards, things like that. You've got the whole setup, you know, first name basis. You can call them up and say, hey, look, there's something wrong. A department head and there's something wrong in your ward, you give them a call. I am every, almost every day meeting somebody new, having a good conversation with them. You know, they've, they're very interesting people. But I, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with networks. The concern is really people you're, you're tied into. You know, networking is just meeting people, but people you're tied in with, people whose inter interests you'd represent, who you might represent more than the needs of your own ward, you might get that confused. That's not something we can allow. That's not something we can afford. I have, you can't, can't, really, can't really buy me. I have no expenses. I have no need for any added benefits. 
I'm here to do my job, and my job is do the best I can for this ward. And nobody's, nobody's going to buy me. Nobody's going to change that. Thanks, Jack. Steve. Well, Jack used the perfect term, networking. That's what we're talking about here, basically. Uh, some people like to call it other things, but it's really networking. It's the same as in business. John's been in business. I've been in business. Jack will have his shot, I'm sure. It's, look, it's, it's about getting to know people, having them know you. So when I call up somebody at the city hall and say, this is Steve Foote calling, they don't have to go, who? They know who they're talking to, and they're going to pick up that phone. That's the key to it. I have endorsements from the Sprinkler Fitters Local Union 550 and also the Carpenters Union Local 624. Those are building trade unions. I have, I've always had a great relationship with the building trade unions. Do they have any influence over me? You bet they do. And you know why? Because I agree with them 100%. I want building trade unions to be building the projects around Brockton because I know that they're trained properly, they do things safely, and they can do the job that we can count on for the safety of our citizens and all these projects that we have coming up. And we have a lot of them. And we'll talk further, I hope, about my, pro my uh, plans for village revitalization, which will come into play on this. So that's, uh, you know, the question is, can you, get into, can you get your foot in the door, pardon the pun? If you can't you do that, and can you get uh, their attention downtown? I know I can. I've been around. I've been networking on this for 15 years. I know all these guys and girls. I know how to get through. And that's a huge, huge thing for a first-time counselor. You'll, you'll be able to work, in, work your way in and talk to people and get respected right away and not have them push it to the back of the bus. Okay, next up we're going Mark, to talk. Uh, can I have a rebuttal on that? Okay, please? we will. Yep, everybody will get a chance. Sure, go ahead, John. Actually, it's it's a comment. It's not not really really a rebuttal, and it's it's a comment on I, I think what what Jack mentioned earlier. Uh, talking to people out there, going door to door, I I've noticed a lot of people have, of course, a lot of people have issues, a lot of people have problems. Okay, but a lot of people. Uh, don't have the initiative um, or they're shy or it's in their personality not to make that phone call, I will be glad to make that phone call for them and get back to them. And I, I, I'm proud to say that I will get back to them. Uh, if, if you have an issue, I will get back to you within 24 hours for sure with an answer. And if I don't have the answer, I will find somebody that will, will, get, will get you the answer in the, in the, in the city departments. Um, there's, there's a lot of people that won't make that phone call, but will let that, whatever issue, whatever, whether it's roads or public safety or whatever, uh, they, they will let that fester. So I'm willing to, I'm willing to take that initiative for the, for the uh, voters of Ward 6. I agree with John 100% on that. Okay. Follow up, Jack, do you have anything you want to say to that? Um, I agree with John and the phone talking about the phone, that's, that's one thing I've also promised, to return phone calls within 24 hours. There's, in this day and age, you always have your phone on you. There's really no excuse not to. Okay. Steve, did you have your thoughts on that covered? Uh, yes, I, I agree with John. Uh, basically, he described the job of the ward counselor, and I have uh, no disagreement with his description. Okay, let's talk about communication with the public, okay? Um, city counselor is front line. It's the person that you call when you have a problem in your ward. There are counselors at large that are citywide, but if you have a problem with your street light or your road, you generally call your ward counselor. How would you communicate with the public? We talked about phone conversation. What other ways would you communicate with the public? I'll start with Steve first. Well, uh, in this campaign, I have uh, not only do I have my cell phone that anybody can call me on, 508-479-8373. Uh, I have my home phone line, which is now dedicated strictly to business for this campaign and then will be dedicated strictly to business for the ward. If you don't want to get into a big conversation with me, you just want to tell me a street light's out or something like that, just leave a quick message. I'll return all calls by the end of the day. That's my pledge. That number is 508-587-3126. I also have my website, www.stephenfoot.org. Stephen with an N, foot with an E on the end of it. All my positions are in greater detail there. Uh, we also have Facebook that can be accessed from the website. You can follow my campaign there. We put in stuff every, every week and uh, so you can see uh, the progress that we're making. And we'll expand that. If I'm elected, we'll expand that to be a website and a, and a Facebook that can be used for this office. 
So people can get a hold of me anytime they want with any questions they have. I'm a very affable guy. Everybody that knows me knows that. I've been around for a long time. Most of the things you're going to call me about or ask me about, I'm already aware of. But it doesn't hurt to pick up that phone and, and put, put the bug in my ear and get me going on something. Sometimes it's something up a little side street that I didn't see. So that's what, what the people need to do. I, have, I think I've covered everything as far as social media and, and telephones and everything I can do. And I'll also be occasionally dropping by just to see how things are going. So you'll see me. Okay, I'm going to give everybody a minute 30. Steve uh, started with a minute 30, so I'll stick with that. John Drusinskis. I also have a, a Facebook page that you can, you can access very easily. Um, the description of my views and my opinions and my vision for Ward 6 on there. Uh, my home number is 508-586-8599. I have an answering machine. I'm not home all the time, but as I said earlier, I will return phone calls within 24 hours. I check my messages at least three or four different times a day uh, from where, in, in, you know, with my mobile phone also, you know, to make sure nobody has called into my home phone. Uh, I do have a cell phone. It's um, um, uh, area code 857-248-5860. I don't have, cu I currently do not have a website, but you can find out, um, I, I, I believe in personal contact and you can call me at any time and, I'm willing to take as much time as it, as it takes on the phone or through my Facebook page to explain my views and opinions. Okay, and Jack. Well, I also have a Facebook app. The campaign has a Twitter. We have a website. Please don't hesitate to call. I'm 18. This, is the, uh, this debate's the first time my phone has really been off of my body since I woke up this morning. So I will, I will always, if I miss your call, the voicemail will be right there. Also, feel free to drop by. My address is on the pamphlets I hang out, uh, hand out, 129 Lester Road. Feel free to stop in. My cell phone number is 508-410-0330. And in, if there's any way that you wish to access me, you know, I can make myself any more accessible, don't, please don't hesitate. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, um, just, sure. Just one Follow comment. up. Um, it, this is not a rebuttal. I, I failed to. Uh, Jack reminded me. I failed to mention my address. Fifteen Faxon Street, uh, down in the Village section. And um, I just want to echo what Jack said. Um, yeah, feel free to stop by, anytime. Three hundred six Sully Road, right around the corner from the Brookfield School. Anytime you want to stop in, feel free. You guys better have hors d'oeuvres and stuff ready for the <laughs> residents of Ward 6. Um, let's talk about um, commitment to the office. Um, during the Council at Large debate we just hosted, um, Kevin Tocci asked a question about full-time or part-time. Comes up all the time during campaigns. I ran for a couple of offices. I was asked my views when I ran for state rep, and uh, the probate job was definitely a full-time job. What do you view it as for a city councilor? And what type of time do you have available to be either a full-time or a part-time city council? We will start with Jack Lally. You know, city council is, it's, it would be the most important thing I would be doing. I'm going to college as well. I'm currently attending Bridgewater State University. And I came here almost right from there. My classes get out. The latest class I have ends at 12.15. I'm out of there, I'm at home by one, and I'm ready to go. While city council I consider to be a pretty, pretty full-time position, I would like to remind everyone at home that a lot of other city councilors have full-time jobs. It's not, they haven't just resolved themselves to do this. And college takes less time a day and a week than a full-time job. I'm entirely confident that I can handle both of these at the same time. Okay, next would be Steve Foote. Uh, I believe, I think we're all probably in agreement that we'll be doing it as a full-time job. Right now, I'm employed part-time by Napa Auto Parts over by Campanelli Stadium. If I'm elected to this position, I'll be quitting that job and doing this full-time. Um, uh, 
unfortunately, what Jack doesn't know, and I don't know if John knows, a lot of these things are done during breakfast meetings. <laughs> There's a lot of breakfast meetings in, in uh, this type of job. But uh, be that as it may, I will be there full time. I won't be working. And uh, as far as uh, the pay goes, which is sometimes when they're talking full time, I know Council Stewart at one time wanted to make it $96,000 a year or something along those lines. I'm fine with the way it's written in the ordinance now. I'm fine with the pay that it has now. I don't want to see any changes there. It's not necessary, and we can't afford it. Okay, John Krasinskis. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a retired person, which I think, as I mentioned earlier, it gives me a distinct advantage over both my candidates, uh, bo both my opponents. Um, I have a lot of volunteer work going on in the community, but I can visualize this being my number one um, uh, volunteerism. I want to correct Steve on on the uh, on on the salary. I, I believe uh, yes, Councilor Stewart um, filed an ordinance to to raise the the salary. It's more of a stipend uh, from from ten thousand to fifteen thousand dollars a year. I'm opposed to that. Um, it's 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 a pittance when you when you consider eleven councilors and fifty five thousand uh, dollar raise. But the budget crisis the city is in right now. I don't think I don't think we need it. I don't think the city can afford it. You know, let them put that fifty-five thousand dollars, even though it's a pittance. As I said, when you consider the overall city budget, let them put that money towards something else. Um, it's it, it, it's it's it's. I, I consider it a full-time job. I agree with Steve and Jack. Quick rebuttal. Sure. Uh, to John's what John said. Uh, I've been watching these city council meetings, every single one of them since the year 2000. If I'm not at them personally, I watch them on television here on Brockton Community Access Cable. Uh, John obviously didn't watch them that long because prior to them talking about this $15,000 that they want, Stewart had made a made, he didn't put make a motion, but he did throw it out there, him and others threw it out there that uh, around 96,000, when that didn't fly, which obviously it was shot down real quick. Uh, then they fell back to this, trying to get this 15,000. So that's, that's where that came from. Any follow up to that, Jack, and then John, if you do? Well, I'd, I'd like to sort of respond to what Steve said earlier about how a lot of, a lot of things go, go down over breakfast. I've spoken with my professors, and I'll speak with every time I change classes or get another class, I will and I will, I'll speak to them about it. They understand the sort of uniqueness of the position I'm in. And if something was so pressing that we couldn't schedule it for a late lunch or dinner or any time in between, they, I, I could just let them know and they'd be all right as long as I made up the work, which of course I will, to, uh, to miss that class. Thank you. Okay, John, did you have anything to add to I, that? I have no comment. Okay. Um, earlier, the uh, village was mentioned by one of the candidates. Uh, Ward 6, uh, John lives in the village. Steve's lived in Ward 6 all his life, and, and Jack's in Ward 6. Um, different parts of the city have been revitalized over the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, we, have, we had a stadium, courthouse, library, focus on the downtown area, focus on Campello, not as much on Montello and not as much on the village, okay? Um, you get elected a city council, any of the three of you. What's the first thing you would do to try to ensure that there's funding and revitalization in that village? I also heard Jack talk about that when I interviewed him. So I'm gonna let, um, I'm gonna let John go first and we'll go from there. Okay, well, Having lived in the village my entire life, I've, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? Um, at one time, there was a bunch of uh, a series of little shops, stores, bars. Uh, you can almost get it. It was, it was a, truly a village, a self-contained community. Then I went downhill uh, a few years ago, and now it's starting to make a comeback. Uh, and w one of the things that, that I, I, I'm liking and I like to see continue is more single-family homes. There's less vacant lots now. 
there are less uh, abandoned buildings. Uh, one, of my, one of my talking points, one of my uh, big issues is absentee landlords. Absentee landlords that, um, that do not take care of their properties, that do not even live in, you know, they don't live in Ward 6, they don't even live in Brockton. Uh, all they care about is that monthly rent, rent check. So I'm gonna hold those absentee landlords responsible, keeping their properties clean, and also uh, doing a better screening process as far as who they rent, who their tenants are. Uh, we don't want the criminal clientele, the criminal element in our area, certainly, and they, they need to do, do a better job. So um, I'm encouraged by what I see um, in my neighborhood. There's more single family homes, there's less vacant lots, and I, I plan on um, encouraging that going forward. Okay, next would be Jack Lally. Well, the, the first thing I would do as city councilor, it's something, if you've seen the interview I had with Mr. Lindy, it's something I've already started to do, is pick up the phone. Call a business. The, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, just call a business that's, you know, expanding, or they're thinking of growing, ask them a couple questions, say, hey, why don't you check out the area? I know filling the entire area with businesses is not exactly what everyone would like to see, but if we have a couple of businesses brought in, they can make deals with the city and the zoning board to be approved. Part of that could be beautification of the area, which increases property values and people's desire to build single family homes and other things on the land. Thank you. Okay, Steve. This area down in the village has been essentially the same for the last 10 years, maybe maybe 20. Uh, since the shoe factory moved out, uh, the grass has been overgrown down there. All the little bars, when I was a kid, there used to be like six bars. John will remember this. There used to be about six bars down there. The guys would get out of work and they'd go have a couple of beers after work, maybe a pizza or whatever. And, you know, there was some vibrant stuff going on down there. But right now it's dead. Uh, there's been some talk about the Lit Village being bought by... Uh, I don't know who, somebody, but that's been going on for like two years. It was an operating business when it was closed. Well, what takes two years to get it back opened again if somebody actually has bought it and is interested in it? But the problem is, what we need to do is get, to, get the village included in part of this overall downtown redevelopment plan that we have going on right here. I'm going to talk to uh, Bob May about that uh, to get some of that block grant money that we, uh, keeps getting funneled into downtown and Campello now it's spreading there. It never comes up to Montel, and it never comes up to Ward 6. We pay the same taxes that everybody else in the city pays. We should not be excluded from that. We have a T station. We have the Montello train station that's there. And all it is is a parking lot for people that want to, you know, not go to the other ones because they're too busy. We need to get some business down there that's going to make people get off that train and spend some money in Ward 6. And we need to get, part, get in on the block grant and part of the overall city development picture to get it to uh, to get that happening, it's too big for us to handle by ourselves. We need city help on that. Okay, Mark rebuttal. Uh, sure. Okay, comment actually, not a rebuttal. Just to clarify, the, the uh, Steve mentioned the uh, the bar that was sold. Okay, uh, that is been bought by a current business owner in Campello. He owns a family breakfast establishment. His intention when he when he bought that business from the um, from the previous bar owner was to turn the turn the uh, establishment into a, a a family restaurant. Okay, he applied for a license. Um, the license was approved. Uh, as Steve mentioned, the, 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 there has been no activity in that building for I don't know if it's been two years, but it's been at least a year. So one of my goals as city councilor is to find out what is going on, with, uh, whether he has a problem with financing, whether he has a problem with the other permits. We need to find out what's going on with that building so it doesn't remain empty. Quick Jack, mark, did you have a follow uh, I'll Jack and then Steve. I, I'll defer to Steve. Okay. I have, I have just to just, just to, on what John said, the, the, man, the, the owner may have good intentions. I'm not concerned about intentions. I'm concerned about action. Okay. Um, let's, I, I, I was in a certain Ward 6 establishment and I was talking to one of the business owners and the business owner said to me, um, 
do any of the candidates that are running have any idea what we go through on a daily basis? Uh, one of the things he specifically asked me to ask, and I didn't go out and do post on the hub, what questions do you have, or any of that stuff, but this is a different question, <coughs> really isn't specific to the city council. Do you folks know, for example, what the cost of home heating oil is because you get working class blue collar residents in Ward 6, probably more so than anybody else. I'm going to start with Jack. You know, personally, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the cost of home heating oil is. I imagine it would vary based upon the size of your house, where you get it from. But I'm determined entirely to make things as cheap and as cost effective for the people of Brockton as possible. If I can reduce the tax burden on the citizens, I will. I will try. I don't know if I'll be successful. Might even have to raise taxes. Don't know. But anything I can do or anything I can try to make the government burden on your lives better, don't hesitate to let me know. Go to Steve. Uh, just dropped under two bucks a gallon. My advice to everybody at home would be, please, fill up your tank now before it goes up again. John? Mark, can I ask you what, what prompted that question? Was, was this particular business owner talking about his own business, his house? Or? He's talking about actually both. Okay. He, he, he wanted to know if the candidates were in touch. I'm going to go back to taxes in a minute since that was already brought up mm -hmm. um, about the, the tax rate. But he just said to me, you know, I, I got a question for you and I want you to ask it. And I said, okay, I'll ask it. Well, it's not my question. I, 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 my own home, personally, I, I don't use oil. I, I heat with gas, but I can tell you the, um, you know, the gas rates have been going up and up uh, as all utility costs have. And I don't know how much we can imp impact that on the local level, but uh, I, I'm, I'm aware of the costs, certainly as a homeowner. Okay, let's go then. Let's what, go Mark, back to I taxes. A quick, uh, quick, quick sure. Thing in there? Yeah. Uh, just for the folks at home, they can also apply for heating assistance at Self Help on uh, uh, down at the south side of Brockton. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's in the book. Uh, so if you're struggling with home heating oil, or if you think you're going to struggle with home heating oil, they're taking applications now. Self Help in Brockton. Okay, Jeff. Something. On touching upon businesses. I know the, the, man's a biz, uh, the man or woman's a business owner. That's another thing. If you own a business in Ward 6, you're, you're part of the ward. You drive, help drive development in the ward. Please contact me. Feel free. Thank you. Okay. Any follow-up from anybody? Let, let's go to taxes, okay? A um, lot of information on the city website now has, wasn't there before. There's lots of information. You can read stuff about desal. You can read stuff about the power plant. You can look at the budget, tax rates. Okay, um, why don't we start uh, with John? The the do you know the residential? The, if you went to the chamber and did a debate, I don't think they're going to do Ward Six. They're doing the mayor's race, mm -hmm. doing the council at large race. Maybe they would ask you the question: What is the the residential and the business tax rate? Do you have the answer? Uh, I don't know the exact tax rate. I can tell you I pay, uh, at, at my house, I pay nearly uh, nearly $800 a quarter, okay? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the, what the business rate would be, no. Okay, I know the chamber advocates actively at the city council, they want it lowered. If it gets lowered, then the residents pay more. So there's a lot of talk about that. I'm not trying to be un unfair, Jack. I know you're not a homeowner and you live with your parents, but you're a student and you're someone that studies things. Do you know the answer to that question? No, I don't. I'm, it's just one of, those th I, one of those things I do not know. I can tell you, though, uh, I, d I, do, I do live with my parents. It's something I jokingly refer to as part of, I'm running on fiscally respon fiscal responsibility, so. Um, no, I do know that, you know, people want lower, they want lower home taxes. That's something I've heard. It's got to be the third, third most common thing I've heard in a complaint 
at the door that taxes are too high. And that's something the city's forced into doing when we are given less money from the state and from the federal government. But if we transition the burden onto businesses, more, more onto businesses than with the balance we have now, businesses may start to leave. And if we take the burden off of the businesses, it leads straight to the people. What we got to do is we've got to find more ways to increase revenue, like bring in more businesses, the power plants are offering a lot of money, the casino, things like that. The more revenue we get, the less money we need to take from your paychecks. Steve? Uh, the city council sets the tax rate in December every year. Um, I've been to the last four uh, tech hearings that they've had for that to speak out against tax increases. Uh, I was with large groups most of the time. Plenty of people were there speaking out as well as I was. Uh, I believe that did influence the council to keep it as low as they could. Uh, currently, I believe it's uh, $18 and change per thousand for residential and $33 and change for commercial. Okay. Um, taxes also lead into the city council discussion right now about buying things that we don't have the money for. If you have seen the city council within the last month in any way, shape, or form in person or on TV, they're talking about the possibility of putting a prop two and a half override on the ballot so they can buy a ladder truck, so they can purchase vehicles for the school department and, and other issues. Historically, Brockton has never passed a two and a half override or a debt exclusion. Um, what would be your position as a, a resident and taxpayer or family member of a resident or taxpayer on a debt exclusion or, or an override? Steve. Uh, as you already stated, Mark, an override has never worked in Brockton. It never will pass. It's, it's, a, a, it's a fool's folly to even put it on the ballot. But I understand why they're doing it. They're doing it to call attention to this problem. Um, Basically, what they need to do is take the seven or eight items that they have that they wanted to put on there, get them lo located in order, and the first, in my opinion, would be the ladder truck, which is desperately needed by the fire department. We don't, we need that ladder truck. We, uh, it ha it, we have to get that one way or the other. Now, my opinion is we have a $387 million budget here in Brockton. The ladder truck costs about a million and a half, maybe $2 million. I think I can find, if you give me a red pen in that budget book, I think I can find that $2 million. I can also find the shortage of the $3.6 million that was short this year. I'll find that too. I don't think that's too hard to do. They always tell you it's bare bones. They always give you the sky is falling, woe is me. Stop complaining about it. Let's dig out, let's get in there, roll up our sleeves, dig our hands in, and figure out where we're going to make these cuts and how we're going to afford that essential ladder truck. We have to have it. It's got to be there. Okay, next would be John Drzeskis. I, I agree with Steve. I'm, I'm opposed to a two and a half override. We don't want to put any extra burden on the taxpayers uh, unnecessarily. Um, we do need a new, a new ladder truck. We do need uh, extra services in the city. Like Steve, I think we can find money that's there. Okay, we're, we're willing to spend $88 million for an Aquaria desal plant that we don't want, we don't need and it's been an antiquated for years. So uh, that $88 million can be put, I'm sure they can find other uses for that money um, towards, towards a ladder truck, towards putting more uh, boots on the ground for the police. Uh, that's, that, 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 that's something we, we, we definitely do need. Public safety is an issue. Uh, first responders should be our, one of our top concerns. Okay, thank you. I need all the extra seconds I can get. They just told me six, and I want to make sure you guys have room for closing. Jack. Well, oh, really? Six minutes left? Time's mm -hmm. flying, flying by. Yep. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is I've, I've talked to a lot of city employees who've seen their departments reduced by a large amount over time, and instead of trying to cut more from them and make their jobs harder, the first thing, it may, it may be necessary to make cuts, it may be, but the first thing I'd like to do is bring in, going back to business leaders, bring in local business leaders, have them 
look at all the department's budgets, businesses have to stay competitive, cost effective, up to date. Governments don't. If they can make ways that we can be more efficient and cost effective and we implement those ways, we can save money that can go right back into those departments' budgets and it's, it's like having a whole extra boost of cash without ever messing with what they currently are being paid by the city. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have left about five minutes? Four minutes, okay. I want to make sure you all get a minute for your closing statement. Try to weave into the closing statement positions on key issues that are out there now, like desal and power plant. I told you I wasn't going to do that, but time got away from us. It's all fun. So we're going to start with the closing statement, the orders that we drew. And the first candidate up for a minute is Jack Lally. Well, my, my view on the power plant would have to be, I would, I would vote for it. I would support the power plant. It's natural gas. It's clean burning. It's not going to leave a big cloud of smog over your head or anything. But I will only vote for the power plant if the people in the area surrounding it would support it. I'm not going to leave something lurking over their houses if they would not appreciate it. As for the casino, you've, if you see my interview, I say thing, I describe my rationale behind the casino. I'd vote in favor of it. You know, you could drive to another one. Um, I'm very accessible. If you have any questions, feel free to call 508-410-0330. I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thank you. Steve would be next. Hi, uh, Steve Foote. I am uh, what Jack said about the, uh, when we talk about uh, the power plant and the casino, uh, they're not issues that are going to be before the council. The power plant is in the courts. The casino is in the uh, gaming commission's realm. So both of those are not going to come before the city council, so neither one of them. Uh, is uh, a factor. Um, this is a tough election for me because I like both of these guys. You know, I, I've known John for years. I've done business with him in the past. I've just met Jack in this course of this election, but he's a nice kid. He's a great guy. And uh, so it makes it a little tough to, you know, have a little go. But uh, I think it, it was clear to see in this debate that this is a time for tough decisions. They'll, both of these guys are going to have their time, but it's not in this election because we need to have somebody in there to represent Ward 6 that can go right out there, straight from the gun, and immediately be effective and know who to call, what to do, and how to do it. I'm that man. Please vote for Steve Foote on September 22nd. Okay, and John Drzezinskis. John Drzezinskis, as Mark said. Um, my position on the power plant has always been clear. I'm opposed to the power plant on several grounds, on environmental issues, um, there's no guarantee that when and if the power plant is built, the benefits of that power plant will go to the residents of Brockton. There's no guarantee that the workers at that power plant will be Brockton residents. This is a for-profit business that uh, can do whatever they want. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the Aquaria plant, I'm opposed to it. Okay, uh, that $88 million can be spent to something else. The casino looks like it's going to be built. Uh, the, the casino proponents, the, the casino builders have promised all kinds of money to the city. And believe me, uh, if they renege on those promises, I'm, go I'm, I'm coming after them. So I respectfully ask for your vote on September 22nd. My name is John Vazenskis. Please vote for me. And gentlemen, thank you very much. Very civil debate. Nice to see three people uh, that get along and will obviously work together in the future. Um, I'd like to thank the staff and the crew of Brockton Community Access for bringing us this important forum. Uh, make sure, primary day is not too far away, preliminary day, make sure you exercise your civic duty and go out and vote. And stay tuned for election coverage on prim preliminary night. Thanks for watching.